Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 58 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In the last few tutorials, we looked at pixel level image segmentation. And in today's video, let's actually look at object detection. And for that, we are going to use a process called template matching. And as the name suggests, this is very straightforward. You have a very tiny image, which is a subset of your actual large image. And this tiny image contains information about the feature or the object of interest. And we are going to slide this tiny image onto the original image and use statistics to find out how well that match is. Oftentimes we use statistics like mean square difference between the template image and your actual patch that we are trying to map out, okay? Uh, you can use uh, a few statistics that are available as part of OpenCV. So let's jump in. Now, uh, just to give you a quick idea in terms of where to find more information on this topic, just Google search. I'll actually include the link as part of the description, but it's under OpenCV template matching, okay? And you can read through this, but like I mentioned earlier, you have a smaller image that access template and you slide it over your larger image and then it uses statistics to minimize uh, the uh, or to quantify the difference between the template image and the patch where it is uh, sliding onto your original image. So here is a quick example. When you take this image, apparently the feature right there is seen right around here, right? I mean, you can see that feature right there. So this image is actually, you're sliding it onto your original image. And when you put that image in the top left corner, there is some uh, uh, you know, quantified error between this image and that location. So as you keep sliding, there comes a point where this actually matches very well with that specific region. So that's where, as you can see, this bright spot right there. So this is where the match is ideal and the match is always the top left part of this image because you're putting this entire patch right here. So the top left coordinate, that's it. This is very simple and what methods are there to quantify statistically the match between the patch and your original image? Well, you can use uh, square difference, you can use square difference normalized and uh, cross correlation. Again, one thing you have to remember when you're looking at square difference, mean square difference, when the match is the best match, then the value should be low because you're looking at the mean square difference, right? When you're looking at correlation, then the value would be high so uh, they should have actually inverted these so the scale would be the same on all, but it's okay. Uh, as long as you remember that, okay, if you end up using square difference, then look for the minima. If you're using cross correlation, then you use the maxima because you want the maximum correlation. That's the only thing you need to remember, okay? So let's uh, jump in. I have written a few lines of code so you can uh, have a quick look at it, but this is the image I'm gonna use. Again, if you have a complicated image, go ahead and use it. This is the image and I cropped out a small region, I think around here to actually get my template image. Okay, so this is my template image. If I zoom in, you can see this is how my template image looks like. This is basically a cropped out uh, particle. We'll see that when we match it, it should match exactly where I cropped that image from. Okay, so using that, let's actually find out at least one of these other particles that matches the template. But most of the time we want all a bunch of regions that matches this template. Okay, again, this process is not scale invariant. In other words, the scale is fixed. So you cannot just say, okay, this is my shape, identify all regions that kind of match my shape. You cannot do that. This is rigid and then you're just sliding it. This is as simple as it gets. If you want a much more complicated or a versatile way of doing object detection, then wait for my tutorials, upcoming tutorials on machine learning because machine learning is a great tool to do these type of things. Hey, I have a cat template. Show me all areas, show me all types of cats. That's exactly where machine learning is very powerful. But template matching is a very easy way to implement this. So let's go ahead and have a quick look. Okay, here is the code. And like I mentioned earlier, we are going to use OpenCV. And uh, let's also import matplotlib so we can actually do some plotting. And the image I'm going to import is our titanium powder and I'm gonna convert that into grayscale, okay? And uh, uh, the template, again, the small little image, 
is a cropped out image out of this uh, larger image and I'm also reading it as grayscale. I could have just uh, added this line, but I'm just showing you two ways of reading images into uh, gray. Either directly read them as gray by supplying a value of zero when you're using OpenCV, or just uh, if, you, if your image is RGB, go ahead and add another line to convert that to gray. Again, these are the topics I've covered in my earlier tutorials, but it's worth repeating. Uh, uh, you know, to reinforce this message. Okay, so let's go ahead and run these lines and see how our output looks like. Okay, so now we have our uh, original image in grayscale and our template image. Our original image is 528 by 700 and my template image is 18 by 16. Now in the next line, I'm actually extracting the height and width of my image. So by just doing template.shape, it gives me the height and width, and I'm assigning it to variables called H and W, okay, for my height and width. And why do I need that? Well, I need that because if I identify this top left corner where I have the best match, now I can uh, define the height and width of the rectangle I would like to draw around this matched template so we can see regions where the templates are matched. That's pretty much it. Otherwise, no need to do that. Okay, so I did comment out again. I'll share my code as, uh, again, look in the de description for where you can find this code. But uh, uh, here, again, what methods are available? The same thing. I copied them from the documentation so you guys have a quick look at what are the available uh, statistical uh, you know, uh, algorithms or uh, ways to quantify this difference. Okay, so how do you actually apply? As usual with most functions, it's just one single line. So I'm just assigning a variable called res and it is cv2.match template. Match template is uh, the function that we are applying here. And the first argument is your larger image, which is our grayscale image. And the second one is the template. And the third one is what method, what statistical method do you want to use to quantify this uh, difference between this template and gray image? That's it. Okay, so uh, for now, let's go ahead and use the square difference again. Let me remember you, sorry, let me remind you that square difference means you're looking for the minimum value and not the maximum. Once you apply this, let's go ahead and do that actually. Let's uh, run this line so you can see exactly what the output looks like, okay? The output is RES, you know, you see a whole bunch of values right there. Okay, you see 10 to the power of 6, 10 to the power of 6, and as you keep sliding, so these are all pixel positions of the top left corner, okay, uh, where you have your, uh, uh, where, uh, where you have your, uh, you know, matches. So this is the statistical value, or this is the TM square difference value at every pixel. And if you look at the output image right here, you see this has a dimensions of 511 by 685, because it's not... We are, uh, we are not sliding this entire image. We start at top left and we end at bottom right minus these many pixels, 18 and 16, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Again, uh, let's go ahead and have a quick look at how our output looks like. How does this RES looks like? And here is how it is. Wherever you see a dark region, dark spot, that's where the top left corner of our template is with minimum value of square difference. That means that's a good match. Okay, so these are all match templates of my top left corner. So now let's go ahead and draw a red box around the region that has the highest match value. Okay, the way we do that is uh, by applying min max look. Okay, so cv2.min max look. What it does is it goes back to my res here and identifies the either the minimum, well, not just either, it identifies the minimum value, the maximum value, and also gives me the locations where it found the minimum and maximum. That's what it is, okay? So when we apply that, I'm unwrapping or I'm extracting these four parameters. So let's go ahead and run this and then have a quick look at it. So my minimum value is 569, if you look at uh, these values here. My maximum value is, uh, I don't know, 7 million something, I guess, 7.7 uh, .7 million, okay? So, and my minimum location is 318 and 418. This, again, this is the pixel location of the top left corner of this box that has a dimension of 18 by 16, okay? 
so uh, anyway, so this is uh, th these are the values. So for this square difference, all we care about is the minimum value. Uh, sorry, minimum, yeah, minimum value and minimum location, right? So top left equals to minimum location. Let's define that. Again, if you're looking at uh, uh, cross correlation, for example, then uh, go ahead and look at the maximum value, not minimum. Okay, now that's my top left. Now, how do you define your bottom right? Well, it's just top left plus the width and top left plus the height, right? I mean, that's your, that's your box location. That's exactly how we define it and then the next step is to go up drawing the drawing a box around the region and in this case i'm using cv2 dot rectangle to draw a box around uh, this location which means i have to supply my original image my top left coordinate my bottom right coordinate and uh, a value of uh, you know what color do i want to draw this box in and then the value uh, of one signifies that I want the thickness of this uh, of this line to be one pixel. That's pretty much it. Okay, and then we are just showing it. So let's go ahead and run these lines and have a look at the match region. So there you go. In fact, this is where I cropped my original uh, template. Now. Obviously, getting one match is not what you're probably looking for uh, in most applications. You want to see other regions that match this template within certain degree of acceptance. So let's do that in the second part of this. So again, the second part is, uh, again, this part is pretty much the same. Let's clear all variables so we can start from scratch. So let's run these lines again. Again, nothing different than what we already talked okay so far so good and then res equals to this is exactly the same now instead of uh, square difference i'm using uh, uh, correlation coefficient normalized okay so this is what let's go ahead and run this line and again uh, let's have a quick look at the image there so here is how this looks like previously this is how we had our square difference image and this is our uh, correlation coefficient image and now you can see how we are hunting for the maximum value and not the minimum value okay that's why I used a different template here or a different statistical uh, quantifier uh, here okay so now I'm going to uh, set a threshold of 0 0.8 now if you actually look at our res in this case it's got like values going from negative something all the way to 0 0.05 and 0 0.02 0 0.12 there 0.17 go ahead and plot these values to see how how they look like okay i'll leave that to you but what i'm going to do is if it is a perfect match then this value would be one right when when you're doing this correlation a perfect match would be equals to one so i said okay if it's within 80 percent i'm fine so i set a threshold of 0 0.8 and then i'm just assigning all the values uh, where the threshold or where my res is greater than or equal to threshold so anything 0 0.8 or above give me the locations right np dot where give me the locations of regions where i have my res greater than or equal to threshold that's exactly what this line does and let's run it and we should see x and y values so if i open uh, name threshold sorry let's go ahead and run this line and then run the uh, loc Okay, so here, now we should see two. Zero stands for our X coordinate and one stands for our Y coordinate, okay? So by putting these two together, I know exactly where the top left of the box is. The first one is 0, 221. The second one is 0, 231, 0, 232, and so on. So how do we put that together? Again, I'm trying to include a sub-tutorial within this tutorial, which is using a zip function, ZIP. I'm not sure if I covered this in any of my previous tutorials, but a zip function is just, again, a uh, iterator of tuples where the first item in each is paired with the first item in the second. So in this, it's actually pairing 0 with 221, 0 with 231, 0 with 232, and so on, all the way to the end of, the, end of this uh, uh, tuple, okay? Okay, so that's so we are using the zip, and for each entry in my zipped location, draw a rectangle, 
And where do you want to draw the rectangle? Wherever that point is, which signifies the top left corner. And then look at the width and the height. Go ahead and add it. This is just like how we have done it the last time. So this time, instead of black, let's actually draw a red rectangle. Again, remember, this is open CV. So B, G, and R, right? So we are doing a red rectangle of uh, thickness one. That's it. And let's show all these locations. Let's run the code in its entirety. And there you go. Here is our image. And uh, you can see all the locations and all the ones that you're seeing here, they matched 0 0.8 or above in terms of our cross correlation uh, value or uh, correlation coefficient norm values over there. Okay, so this is a quick tutorial on uh, template matching. And again, uh, this, is, uh, this can be useful in uh, a lot of scenarios, whether you're looking for grains that have similar shape or uh, that, that, that match a certain template or whether you're looking at, uh, I don't know, nuclei within a specific type of shape or mitochondria within a specific type of shape and identify all the ones that match, this can be this can be very useful. But again, like I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for all mitochondria despite what the shape is, but then the structure looks very similar, then this is not the solution. Then please look at other techniques for object detection and typically deep machine learning is, uh, uh, you know, the, the solution that uh, seem to work most of the time in those scenarios. So I hope you learned uh, something useful in this tutorial. Again, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you're reminded of every useful update that we make to our YouTube channel. Thank you again. Let's meet in the next tutorial.